WCBI News at 10 starts now. Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. Mississippi's primary election day is less than a week away, and the state is garnering attention from Democratic candidates Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. Courtney Ann Jackson has more on how the analysts expect that race to shake out. Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders are on the hunt for delegates. Sanders has canceled his plans for a Friday visit to Jackson just more than 24 hours out. There's a historical point of reference if you look at Mississippi's 2016 primary results. Hillary Clinton took 82.6% while Bernie Sanders received 16.5. He may actually look at that and see it as, um, you know, a predictor of what might, what might be to come. There's another reason Jackson State's Dr. DeAndre Ori believes this year's results may mirror the last cycles. Clinton was very attached to Bill Clinton, who was very popular in the African American community. And then you have Barack Obama, and Biden is very closely aligned with Barack Obama. And so if you use those, I guess, proxies, quite naturally, African Americans uh, being highly supportive of Barack Obama will align more so with, um, with, 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 with Biden. Joe Biden's plans to visit the capital city are still in play. New Hope Baptist Church in Jackson tells us Biden will be in attendance at their Sunday morning service. And the campaign says Vivica A. Fox will campaign with Biden at an event later that afternoon, although location has not been named. Momentum is a powerful factor in politics, and the perception is now, oh, that he is on a roll. Because Mississippi Democrats don't use a winner takes all system for delegates, there could still be delegates in play for Sanders, and in a tight race, all will be significant. Uh, it seemed at first like Bernie Sanders was unstoppable, but there has been a tectonic shift in the uh, electoral plates here, and it looks like Biden is coming out with guns blazing. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. It's not just the Democrats who headed the polls on Tuesday. President Trump faces two opponents on the Republican ticket. There is also a Senate seat in play in all four House districts. Not all of those races are contested, though. A bill making its way through the legislature could make roads safer for people with disabilities. The proposal calls for drivers who apply to have a sticker placed on their license plate. Now, a physician or psychologist would have to certify that a person and the vehicle has a health condition or disability that prevents them from communicating with law enforcement. The impairment would have to last at least five years. So during a traffic stop, law enforcement would know that someone in the vehicle could have an impairment before walking up to that car. Deputies that we spoke with believe that this could be helpful patrolling the roads. Going up to a car uh, it, without knowing this, Sometimes medical issues uh, lead us to believe that, that somebody is being combative or non-compliant, when in all reality, it's simply a medical issue. The bill has passed the state Senate. New tonight, a sentencing date will be set later this year for a man, the man who held up a Tupelo credit union. Jackie Wayne Ballantyne admitted in a federal court filing that he held up the Brightview Federal Credit Union in North Tupelo. This is bank video from the May 6th holdup. Federal prosecutors have agreed to transfer the plea hearing and sentencing to the Northern District of Alabama. Also new tonight, two people escaped serious injuries after a small plane crash in Houston this evening. Sheriff Jim Myers tells WCBI that it happened around 5 o'clock at the Houston Municipal Airport there in Chickasaw County. A father and son were on board the plane, and it appears that it crashed while trying to land. That's according to the sheriff. Sheriff also says that the plane landed upside down, but luckily the two people on board were not seriously hurt. The FAA will investigate the accident. Live view at Durham's Pharmacy in Vernon. Right now we are in the 40s. It doesn't look like we have any uh, serious visibility problems here in West Alabama. However, including Vernon, Sullivan, Millport, Lamar County, and a good chunk of central Alabama, there is a dense fog advisory until 3 o'clock in the morning. Some fog is forming over there where the wind has come and where we have all that moisture from the recent rain. But looking upstream, there's a cold front. The wind is picking up 14 sustained in Memphis, so the wind will scour out any fog problems later on tonight. We'll get down to about 40 degrees. We will be mainly clear tonight into our day tomorrow. Look at our forecast for Friday. Wall-to-wall -wall sunshine here. Highs generally in the 50s. I'm back with your full forecast in just a few minutes. Work on a career and technical education center for high school students in Lee County could soon be underway. 
The new facility will be located at the Community Development Foundation's new industrial park, also called The Hive. Now, it will feature classrooms, four shops, a conference room, and collaboration spaces for larger events. Lee County Superintendent says that the new location will give many students opportunities. And we know that it's going to be positive for our students as they learn these skills to be in that close contact with the members of the industrial park, that industry and manufacturing there. Construction could begin in spring or summer, and it could be ready for classes by the fall of 2021. Meanwhile, it's back to the drawing board in Houston as school leaders there regroup after voters reject a $9 million bond issue that would have funded much needed repairs and upgrades. Superintendent Tony Cook says that he's disappointed because even without the money, the problems are still there. Primary issues, a high priority were some safety issues, uh, roofing, HVAC, uh, some drainage issues that, that we have some real, real issues with that, that cost us a lot of money to uh, fix concrete and to fix drives and, and different things. Uh, so those were our highest priority. Cook says despite Tuesday's results, the school board will continue to try and find ways to repair those issues. All right, we're going to send things back over to Chief Neurologist Keith Gibson. Mm -hmm. Keith, this afternoon, it shaped up to be a nice day. Not we too got bad a, at all. a couple more in store. We certainly do. And you may want to wash the car, Scott, because we finally have the sun coming back out. Yes, yes, and yes. If you want to wash the car over the next few days, now is the time to do it. The full forecast is next. WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. All right, we made it through the rainfall this week. Now we are dry. We will stay dry through the weekend. Your out the door forecast for your Friday morning commute around 40 degrees at 7 o'clock. The wind will be stirring on up later tonight, so it will be a tad bit breezy and cool as we start out the day tomorrow. Let's talk about our first alert forecast, and we have two wonderful animals this evening. We've got Millie and Nola ready for some sunshine here for your Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 59 tomorrow, 60 Saturday, 66 on Sunday. So things are looking pretty good here for the weekend. Don't forget about the time change. We go ahead one hour Sunday morning, so we will be shifting more daylight into the evening. And that's pretty good news if you want to be out and about during the evenings, later the spring and the summer. Our off insurance camera network time lapses from Louisville, Mississippi, Vernon there, Durham's Pharmacy, Tupelo, Columbus. Clouds this morning and rain dismal. And then all the afternoon sunshine. So very nice across the region right now. The system of yesterday and the last couple of days well off to the east. We do have a cold front moving through the region right now. That will stir up the wind later tonight and tomorrow, but high pressure will win out. And that means a pretty nice Friday for us, although it's a bit breezy. High pressure and firm control for our Saturday. That means continuation with the sunny forecast here going into the weekend. Your wind forecast for tomorrow, look at this. Winds from the northwest is about 10 to 20 with some gusts up to 25. So it will be a breezy day for us. And the good news here, sunshine and breezes will help to dry out the ground. And we desperately need that. If you're heading out to the golf course tomorrow, things should be okay, minus the wind factor. But lots and lots of sunshine here across the entire region for our Friday. So no major problems here as we get into the last day of the work week. 57 for you in Tupelo, a little bit cooler in Memphis, 54 tomorrow. If you're going down to Jackson, 59, over to Birmingham, 55, mid 60s right there, Mobile. Gulfport, Biloxi, not too bad. We're along the Gulf Coast. We are advertising 30 Saturday morning, so there's a good shot at a frost or a freeze here. Sunday morning, 35, and then the overnight lows moderate as our daytime highs moderate. Look at this. I think we're back into the 70s by Tuesday, and that will usher in some more moisture here. And the jet stream will become a little bit more favorable for scattered showers and storms as we get into next week starting Monday. So enjoy the dry weather. We have it now. It continues for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Temperatures will be uh, fairly comfortable this weekend. We're back into the uh, warmer air next week. And as we mentioned, a chance for some showers and storms Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Hey everyone, we're here with Bobby and March is a very 
big month for women. We're celebrating International Women's Month, so there's no better way to celebrate women than with a glass of champagne or a glass yes. of wine. Are you, am I right or am I yes, wrong? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so this one, what I love about this champagne here, you were telling me that this woman who made this wine, or I'm sorry, I keep saying wine, who made this champagne, she created the Ritalin. Mm -hmm. She um, improved a lot of techniques that were being used to produce champagne. Um, which she took over the winery after her husband passed away, mm -hmm. which was unheard of during this time. So this is um, Madame Clicquot, as they call her, okay. the widow of Clicquot. I love Clicquot. that name, Madame Clicquot. She's amazing. That's so cool. Yes. And so she was one of the first business women, especially of her time, and um, one of the richest women. So she wow. did the riddling system that allowed people to produce champagne at a faster rate. And then she also did the rosé blend, so I figured okay. we have to have champagne rosé style right so she created the first rosé blend is that mm -hmm. oh, that is so awesome and you know you said it makes it the riddling system puts it out faster and if you're running a business you need you to get that get out. out there and then you say she was like the richest mm -hmm. uh, she built an empire <sighs> women are strong oh yes <laughs> women are strong all right and then this next one here from your favorite place Oregon yes I love Oregon and uh, this is a Mesa out of okay. McMinnville and this family actually came to the United States from Iran, and they came on motorcycles while uh, Flora, who is the mother, was eight months pregnant. Their daughter, Tamina, is now the winemaker. Oh my gosh. Can we, can we talk about how bad it is to get over here <laughs> on a motorcycle? Also, eight months pregnant. I just see this eight month pregnant woman on a motorcycle. If that doesn't say how bad and how strong women are, I don't yes. know what else does. Amazing, incredible story. All right, and Sarah Hedges, one of our, what, that's become one of our favorite uh, wine producers. Yes, so they make these wines biodynamically. She okay. became the winemaker after her parents. Um, and she is, in my, my mind, hands down, the best winemaker in all of Washington and one of the best in the entire country. That is awesome. And here at Restaurant Tyler, you guys actually celebrate uh, women all month long. Yes. So, so all the wines, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. So um, the wine industry is actually very male dominated. So during the month of March, we only show and um, sell wines crafted by women. I think that is awesome. So just know that women are strong, they're beautiful, they're powerful, and they make really good, good, really wine. good wine. All right, until next time, everyone. Cheers. Welcome back everyone. All this week in Health Talk with Baptist, we've been learning about colon cancer and how to screen for it. Tonight, we find out about treatment options if you should get a cancer diagnosis. Hey, I'm Dr. Richard Hurd, part of the gastroenterology team at Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Being diagnosed with colon cancer is a scary thing, but our highly trained and specialized staff can guide you through the next steps. With colon cancer, an early diagnosis is key. If it's caught early, we may be able to remove it completely during your colonoscopy. You may not even need chemotherapy or surgery, so get your colonoscopy. For more advanced cancer, surgery is almost always required. But again, if caught in time, surgery alone may be able to cure it. Once colon cancer begins to spread out from the colon, it becomes more difficult to treat. When this happens, chemotherapy or radiation therapy may be required. It may be used before or after surgery, depending on the size of your cancer. Sometimes cancer that is this far along is not able to be cured. You may still get chemotherapy or radiation, though, to ease your symptoms. If your colon cancer is caught in its earliest stage, your chances of being alive in five years is 74%. If caught in its worst stage, you have only a 6% chance. Don't let the fear of colonoscopy give cancer a head start. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptist. Mail your topic suggestions to healthtalk at wcbi.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. A shot you'll have to see to believe. March Madness comes early in the high school basketball state championships. The highlights are coming up next in sports. WCBI sports coverage of the 2020 SEC Women's Basketball Tournament in Greenville is brought to you by Columbus Orthopedic. Trust one place. Cannon Ford of Starkville. Nobody beats a cannon deal. Nobody. And visit Columbus, the city that has it all.
One more sleep before Mississippi State takes the floor for the SEC Women's Basketball Tournament. The matchup is set, and WCBI Sports' Courtney Robb caught up with the Bulldogs in Greenville, South Carolina today and has more on game preps. Second seeded Mississippi State arriving in Greenville, South Carolina, wasting no time beginning preparations for their Friday quarterfinal matchup in the SEC Women's Basketball Tournament. Not only is MSU competing, the Bulldogs are the SEC reigning champs. So, a lot of pressure to hopefully continue on that SEC championship streak. The difference this year from the 2019 SEC championship, the Bulldogs dealing with a lot more younger players and not a whole lot of experience from last year's squad. Something that MSU head coach Vic Schaefer has been really stressing with his players right now, focusing on having that mental toughness thing. That's what's going to get them to championship Sunday. I think our kids have always been um, prepared at the end of the year. I think they've always been in really good shape. They've always, um, um, you know, had a lot of toughness. And I think it takes that at this time of year. You're going to you know, we're fixing to run into some really good teams in our own tournament. Then you're going to run into some really good teams in the next one. So you better have it. We just you know that we have to take care of our bodies. You know, we got to get a lot of risks and, and eat right. And that's things that Coach has been telling us all through the season. So, um, you know, just, like I said, taking it game by game and not really looking towards the championship, but just starting with that first game to handle our business. Bulldogs will look to defend their SEC title with a matchup at 5 p.m. Central here at Bon Secours Wellness Arena. Reporting in Greenville, South Carolina, Courtney Robb, WCBI Sports. Mississippi State will meet the seven seed LSU Tigers in the SEC tournament quarterfinals tomorrow. LSU defeating Florida 73 to 59. The Bulldogs won the regular season matchup 64 60, but that was before LSU star Ayana Mitchell went down with a season ending knee injury. As Courtney said, tip off tomorrow set for 5 p.m. Title time in Oxford. It'll be interesting to see the rest of the week if another day could top day one. Between the history and the insanity, day one at the pavilion will be remembered for a very long time. The Ripley Lady Tigers looking to take home the gold ball, taking on Moss Point, start of the fourth. Ripley on top, Louisiana Tech commit Robin Lee baseline J, so it's a two-point Ripley lead. For the Lady Tigers with the clutch buckets. Next possession, the kick out to Summer Kirkman, wide open for three. She'll take all three of those. Ripley with a five point lead. Halfway through the fourth, Moss Point makes one more run. It's Lee again. Floater cuts it to a five point game, but Ripley makes the clutch plays late, and the Lady Tigers get the win 37 to 30. Ripley's first 4A, well, their first state championship. Since 2011, they're your 4A state champs. They're playing. They wanted it. They've worked so hard for three years to try to, to, try to get here and get this thing done. And uh, I can't say enough about them. From the time we lost last year, came running up. We said that from that time on that we was going to get a golden ball, and we plan on doing it, and that's what happened this year. Buckle up for this one, the 1A Boys State Championship. Ingemar and Baldwin. Let's get weird. Now halfway through the fourth quarter, Riley Horde to the bucket for the and one. Ingemar with a two-point lead. But they would answer right away. Clayton Stanford, he scored four straight buckets for Ingemar, including that one with the contact for two. Less than four, 15 seconds remaining in the game. Gabe Richardson is going to dump it inside to Jacoby Williams. Misses at the cup, but Horde is there for the tip-in. Ties the ball game with under 10 seconds left. Ingemar plays this out. It's Zach Sugars. Gets a little separation. The mid-range J at the horn is good. Ingemar wins the 1A state championship on a buzzer beater. Falcons get the win 47-45. We practiced that and, you know, not calling timeout, let them set the defense. And you know, they got the ball and got it up the floor. And I knew when, when Zach came across the top of the key, he's going to get some separation. He's going to get a good look. Uh, and like I said, just for, the, just for the amount of work that he's put in coming back from that knee injury, uh, it couldn't happen to a better kid. I really didn't know how much time was left, but I just went to work. And so I just, you know, gave it a chance to fall, got enough arc on it. And like I told him, I practice that shot hundreds of thousands of times daily, man. It's just constant grind on that shot. And it's kind of discouraging because it hadn't been falling, you know, throughout the playoffs like I wanted it to. But, I mean, hey, it, it won me a state championship, so I, I could care less if it fell through the playoffs. I mean, I want to go, we want to go ball, so that's all that matters. They're a really good team, and we wanted to have a chance at the end, and we did. And uh, the kid hit a tough shot, and 
you know, we wanted to make them beat us from the outside, and that's what they did. So, um, tip their hat to them, tip our hat to them, and uh, I'm proud of my kids. Going to miss my seniors. Uh, man, I hate to end it like that, but I'm proud of my guys. Pine Grove looking for the four Pete taking on Baldwin. Lady Panthers making clutch play after clutch play in this one. A lot thanks to Carly Rogers. She'd be the game MVP. She had 22 points and 18 rebounds for the full highlights and recap from the Pine Grove 1A state championship for the fourth straight time. Go to our website, WCBI.com. A lot of excitement. You can and, hear it there too. And it's it only awesome. gets better tomorrow. Col uh, Calhoun wait. City and Columbus in action. Ooh, yeah, but they'd be good. Can't wait for that. Thanks, Tom. Well, let's look at your forecast when we come back. Your WCBI sports coverage of the MHSAA 2020 C Spire State Basketball Championships is brought to you by Columbus Orthopedic, Trust One Place, Cannon Ford of Starkville. Nobody beats a Cannon deal. Nobody. And visit Columbus, the city that has it all. Starkville hosts its annual Taco Hop. The event is sponsored by the Greater Starkville Development Partnership. Several restaurants, they serve specialty street tacos there on Main Street. There was also craft beer tasting and live music. Money raised from the Taco Hop helps to promote Starkville as a tourist destination. Was Amanda out there by chance, Tom? She was. I was jealous. I was I'm there. jealous too. Everyone talking about tacos <laughs> and craft beer. I was like, man, I'm sitting here in the inside all hey, day. Hey, at least they didn't get wet tonight. Yes, it was perfect for mm -hmm. it. A nice night for it. Maybe a little bit chilly. Perfect taco weather. <laughs> we'll take it. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.